Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome back. So, this is lecture number 38 on system of linear equations and we will continue uh, our discussion on this Gauss elimination technique which was uh, introduced in previous lecture. So, today we will go for more general case where we will see uh, this echelon form a very important uh, reduced form where we can identify about the consistency of uh, the solution or the system of equations. So, let us just go back to this what we have done in the previous lecture with the help of simple example. Now, we will consider a rather general uh, example where we have uh, matrix A which has m rows and n columns and then we have this x n by 1 and the right hand side uh, vector of order this m cross 1. So, the echelon form, what is this echelon form which we uh, have introduced already in the previous lecture. In general, this will have uh, this form. So, what exactly this let us discuss here. So, these elements uh, denoted by, by this symbol here, these are the uh, these are the pivot, the pivotal elements and these are non-zero elements. So, what is the property of this pivot element? So, this uh, number we will call a pivot in this matrix when everything below this uh, is 0 and also the left this is the first element. So, we will not be talking about the left to this one. For instance, this one here this is the pivot element because everything to the left all the elements are 0 and here also all the elements are 0 and in this uh, sub matrix everything is, is 0. So, this is we call the pivot element again in this reduced form in this echelon form which we call this matrix will be called uh, or this, uh, this uh, element will be called a pivot because everything here is 0, everything here is 0 and uh, in this sub matrix everything is, is 0 here. Similarly, uh, this one is a pivot if it is a non-zero element and this uh, everything to this one is 0 and everything to this one is 0. So, that is the, the, that's the property of the pivot, it is a non-zero number and all the elements below this are 0, all the elements left to this are 0 and we have this special structure which uh, of the matrix which we call the echelon form. We have these the first few rows are the non-zero rows are this non-zero non rows and the last few rows here which we see are the zeros rows. So, this here are zeros. So, all these rows on the bottom we have set are these with zeros here the right hand side this symbol can. So, this can be 0 these elements or they, they may not be 0 uh, that is the that is the symbol we are using here just to represent this echelon form in general. Here we have uh, these pivot elements which are always uh, non-zero elements and now uh, what uh, exactly the same uh, uh, identification. So, here these are the pivot elements and they are non-zero and uh, with this symbol or this star here these are the other elements they may be 0 and they may not be 0. But what is important here to put into this echelon form we have uh, bring into this structure which uh, uh, this matrix has. So, here then uh, this is step like structure and we need to this is the aim to put uh, into this form uh, so that we have uh, these zeros uh, on the bottom of this of this uh, structure here this, this stair like structure. And if there are the zero rows, they are cons they are taken to this this bottom of this matrix, and then from this augmented part, which was correspond to this B here, uh, these elements may be zero and may not be zero. So once we reduce, and we will see in in one of the examples, a little more general example, how to exactly get this echelon form. So if you remember, there this uh, 
gauss elimination was basically having uh, three steps the first one putting your system into this augmented matrix then reducing the augmented matrix exactly into this echelon form which we call and then uh, we need to identify these pivotal elements the pivot element are the important uh, elements of this this matrix and then we can uh, uh, characterize about the solution also whether we are going to have a unique solution or the solution uh, does not exist or we have infinitely many solutions based on once we identify these pivot elements we can characterize uh, the system in the form of this consistency. So, this uh, putting into echelon form that is the most uh, uh, I mean the, the, the difficult part here. So, once we have uh, the echelon form getting the solution from the echelon form was just through the back substitution which we have uh, observed um, in, in simple examples in previous lecture. So, we have these uh, so called the pivot rows. So, here we have taken these pivot rows to the to the up and then uh, if something is 0 here in our matrix A that we have uh, brought down to this uh, bottom of the matrix. So, these are the pivot rows because the each rows has a pivot here now each rows has a pivot these are the pivot rows pivot rows and the rest here these are called uh, the 0 rows. So, if these are the R in number which usually the notation we use for pivot rows. So, if these are the R rows and we have total M rows. So, naturally these 0 rows will be M minus R. This is uh, the structure which um, we will be uh, using. So, uh, having this uh, let us let me just introduce here one definition though again we will be talking more about this rank because this is not the only definition for rank. There are many other definitions. Uh, for this rank, but this is one of them that this rank of a matrix is defined as the number of the pivots because uh, later on we will observe in, in alternate definition uh, that will again lead to this that rank uh, A is equal to a precisely this number of pivots and that is the reason this number of pivots or the identification of, of this pivots uh, pivot elements are very important. Uh, so, here the rank of the matrix another very important concept of, of a matrix is defined as this number r which is the number of the pivots. So, with this definition uh, we, 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 we go ahead and later on we will be talking more about this rank. So, if we say that the rank a is equal to this number r the number of pivots in our this augmented matrix then what we can observe from this augmented matrix we can identify so many things. The one here is that if these elements here if these elements yeah if these elements here in this uh, 0 rows if they are not equal to 0 if they are not equal to 0 then the equations uh, become inconsistent and why inconsistent because we have the situation that 0 is equal to something non-zero which we have already discussed in the previous lecture. So, if in our echelon form we got uh, these as non-zero number then the system is inconsistent and meaning that the system has no solution. So, that is the first identification we are going to have uh, from this echelon form or in terms of the rank we can define now because we have defined already the rank of the matrix by this number r. So, what in terms of the r we, we will be talking always about now the this is corresponding to the matrix A this first part uh, of this augmented matrix and the second one here this column uh, was this B and the whole matrix we are calling this A uh, B. So, this augmented matrix. So, the, the point here is now the rank in this situation what is the rank of A? Rank of A will be from this matrix how many pivots are there? There are R pivots. So, the rank of A will be R, but if these are the non-zero elements if these are the non-zero elements then there will be also a pivot here. So, we can just reduce it further to make all these 0 and there will be a, a non-zero number here at least in one of the equations the system is inconsistent, 
that is clear when whenever we have uh, one of them is is a non zero number here corresponding to this zero rows then the system is inconsistent but in terms of the rank what we can call that the rank of a matrix which is this one here the rank of a matrix this one is, is this r the number of pivot elements and is not equal to the rank of the whole this augmented matrix because in this situation what will happen when these are the non zero numbers then this rank of this whole matrix that means the the number of pivots in the whole uh, matrix will be uh, will be uh, equal to uh, i will be more than the rank of a and in that case then we have uh, the inconsistency. So, if the rank of these two matrices rank of A and rank of this augmented matrix uh, these are different then we have inconsistency of the system and this will exactly happen when we have these here corresponding to 0 rows we have something non zero then uh, there will be a pivot element here in this column as well in the last column or in other words we call that we have the pivot in the last column and this is uh, exactly the case of this inconsistency. So, in many ways we can uh, discuss this. So, one was uh, already here that because this is not equal to 0. So, inconsistent or we, we call this rightmost uh, right uh, column has a uh, pivot element and this will exactly happen when, when we have this here non zero sitting in one of one of these number uh, is non zero so we have either the rightmost pivot has uh, rightmost column has a pivot or we call rank a is not equal to the rank of the augmented matrix or we call simply by looking at this that if this is non zero then we have a case of no solution clear so, now uh, moving further uh, the next possibility will be when this is 0. So, if these elements are 0 here then we have uh, that the system is consistent because there is nothing like 0 is equal to non 0 in that case. So, if these are 0 then we have two possibilities and yeah one more point to be noted because A x is equal to 0 is always consistent that is the inclusion coming from here because when we have this B 0. So, this uh, right this column everything is 0. So, naturally these numbers will be 0 everything is 0 and we are doing only the row operations from the beginning. So, nothing will change. So, they will be definitely 0 when we have A x is equal to 0. So, in that case the system is always consistent meaning this A x is equal to 0 will have always a solution. So, anyway, so we will be talking little more later and now here when we uh, take this case that these are zeros meaning the system is consistent. Then there are two cases the first here the number of pivot elements is equal to the number of unknowns and this case also we have seen in the last lecture and this is the case when we have exactly uh, or in other words that each column has a pivot because uh, the column columns are exactly the number of unknowns. So, if each column has a pivot then uh, the system has a unique solution because the, the column cannot have more than one pivot that because of this property that below this everything should be 0. So, the each column can have only one pivot and this number of pivot equal to number of unknowns meaning that each column has a pivot because the number of columns equal to the number of unknowns. So, in that case the system will have unique solution we will discuss all these with the help of example uh, today itself. So, in terms of the rank now if we talk about the rank of the A and rank of the A B. So, they will be the same now and that is equal to this R or equal to this N. So, that is the case of uh, in terms of the rank which we will uh, uh, later on discuss uh, more in details. And uh, now coming to the Another possibility that if this is 0 means we have the consistency and the number of pivot elements uh, is less than the number of unknowns. So, in this case what will happen the system will have infinitely many solutions when this is the case and uh, there we will introduce the concept of this free variables and dependent variables and then we can uh, uh, get the, the solution as well I mean some uh, we can generate those infinitely many solutions 
or in terms of the rank what we will say again the rank of this A is equal to rank of B for the consistency, but this rank uh, is less than equal to the number of unknowns. This is what we, we, we talk about this consistency in terms of the rank as well. So, coming to the problem here we will discuss now uh, uh, this uh, solution of this system A x is equal to B where the augmented matrix corresponding to the system is written as here. So, we have uh, how many we have 4 rows and uh, we have uh, 5 columns. So, this is uh, a case where we have 5 unknowns actually. So, the number of columns means the number of unknowns because here this is A and uh, we have our system this A x is equal to is, is equal to B. So, this x here must be uh, to make it consistent with this A will have like x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 and x 5. So, there are 5 unknowns and uh, therefore, this 5 columns each column this will correspond to x 1, this is x 2, this is x 3, this is x 4, this is x 5. So, number of columns always represent the uh, I mean of A here, yeah, not the whole augmented matrix. This is corresponding to A, this is corresponding to B, that is what we have here. So, the number of uh, the columns in this A will represent the number of elements in our system. So, these are there are 5 unknowns and there is another beta here is sitting which uh, belongs to this real number. So, this beta is a real number and we will discuss that for what values of beta we have uh, the solution of the system or we do not have the solution all these consistency part will also depend on on beta in this uh, particular case. Okay, so, what is the idea of this Gauss elimination or the reduction technique to this echelon form we want to have a echelon form out of this augmented matrix and the first step is uh, to make uh, these numbers here 2 minus 1 3 0 out of this row 1. So, if we subtract from this row 2, 2 times the row 1, then this will be 0. Our focus is just to set this 0, rest everything will change accordingly, but we will set, we will eliminate this x 1 from equation number 2, we will eliminate this corresponding to x 1, this coefficient from equation number 3 and also from equation number uh, 4. So, for that we need to do this uh, elementary operation. So, the first elementary operation here we are doing that R 2 uh, we are uh, taking as R 2 minus 2 R 1. So, R 2 minus 2 times R 1. So, this will become 0 and this uh, 2 times this 4 minus 2 times this again this 0 here minus 4 and then this will be plus 4. So, again this will become 0 here this will become 2 now and here 2 minus 2 this is 1 and 2 minus 2 that will be 0. So, this is the, the new uh, row 2 now with this uh, operation and the next uh, yeah here as well uh, we will continue this with, with this augmented uh, uh, column as well. So, here 2 minus 2 that is 0 here. So, this first row operation is completed. We will take now uh, the another one because for R 3 to make this 0 here to eliminate this one we need to just simply add into R 1. So, this will be now R 3 plus R 1 now the row 3. So, here we, when we add this is 0, when we add here also 0, when we add this here we will get 1 and when we add this we will get 2 here, when we add 4 and 1 we will get 5 and this will be 4. So, this is the the, the second row operation we have done, we have eliminated already this uh, first variable and uh, now we will do the third elementary operation that is on the row 4. So, this R 4 should be now R 4 minus 3 times R 1. So, R 4 minus 3 times R 1. So, with this, this will set to be 0 here and here 6 and minus uh, 6 again this is 0, minus 7 and then we have uh, plus 6. So, minus 1 here 1 and then plus 3. So, 4 and 1 minus 3 minus 2 and beta minus 3. So, this is uh, the first step of uh, the elimination technique that we have eliminated uh, x 1 already from the equation 
x2 is, is automatically uh, removed which was uh, usually we do not get uh, such a nice uh, matrix where where this x2 is automatically removed without any operation otherwise we have to repeat this now with the help of this second equation we have to repeat all these to get uh, the to get to eliminate uh, the second variable from from equation 3 and 4 so but this is already eliminated and now we will go to the third one that from uh, now our three uh, the x3 corresponding to this uh, x i mean x3 uh, we have to make the zero all the coefficients that means this third column but here what do we realize that there is already zero there but what happens i mean because remember this uh, stepwise structure of this echelon form as well and this is a very systematic approach so with the help of equation 1 we uh, remove uh, first variable x1 from equation number 2 3 and 4 then equation number 2 will be used to remove x2 from equation number 3 and 4 and equation then uh, 3 will be used to remove uh, x4 and so on so now what we realize here that if we change this if we, if we interchange the two equations the r2 and r3 so we will already get here a zero at this place and uh, and then we can set the other one also 0 to have this r 3 0. So, looking at this uh, now what we will do we will interchange uh, these two row r 2 and r 3 now we will have automatically without much efforts this is structure now. So, we have a w now 1 here and now the aim is to make everything 0 here. So, with the help of this equation 2 now this is a new equation 2 which was equation number 3 before, but now it has become equation number 2 by this interchange and now we will set this uh, element to 0 this is already 0 again only we have to set this to 0 to eliminate this uh, x 3 now x 2 is eliminated x 2 is uh, automatically eliminated by the first operation itself and now we are trying to eliminate x 3. So, x 3 from this equation is eliminated that is also automatic and now this we will eliminate with the help of this equation number 2. So, if we add equation number 2 here then this will be also eliminated. So, our next row operation is r 4 plus r 2 r 4 and then we will add this equation number 2 here. So, this will be or row number 2 this will be uh, set to 0. So, now by adding these uh, these two rows so 2 and and, and 4. So, what we will get minus 1 1 that is 0 here 2 and this 4 this will give 6 and 5 minus 2 this is 3 and 4 plus beta minus 3 this is beta plus 1. So, we got this uh, now this equation now we will continue with the with the process. So, we have removed already this uh, x 3 now we will we will remove the x 4. So, we will remove this x 4 here with the help of this equation number 3 with the help of this r 3 we need to remove r 4. Uh, the coefficient of, of x 4 in, in the row r 4. So, what we will do now if we take 3 times of this and subtract from this r 4 then uh, we get the uh, 0 here at this level. So, doing this r 4 minus 3 r 3 r 4 minus 3 r 3 we will set this also 0. So, by doing so, so 3 times this, this is 0 and see this uh, approach you, you if you, we go in this systematic way, this will not be disturbed when we have all these 0 they will remain 0 because we are doing this operation with this row where left to this everything is 0. So, by doing so it, these numbers will not change these zeros will not change. So, here 6 minus 3 times 2. So, this is 0 again and 3 minus 3 this is also 0 and this beta plus 1 minus 0 into 3 that is beta plus 1. So, this is the reduced form we do not have anything uh, now further to reduce in this uh, case. So, this is the reduced form and now we will identify uh, we will take the first case when beta is not equal to 1. 
So, if we take this case when beta is not equal to 1 that means, something non 0 is sitting at this place here when beta is not equal to 1 something non 0 non 0 will sit here and if something non 0 is sitting here that means, the last column has pivot last column has a pivot meaning that we have an inconsistent system and or in other words we have 0 is equal to something non 0. So, in either case when this beta is not equal to 1 the system is inconsistent and we do not have a solution for the system. So, that means, this is the case of uh, exactly no solution and the case 2 we will consider when beta is equal to minus 1. So, when beta is equal to minus 1 this is exactly the case where we will discuss about the solution because the system becomes consistent now the last row has become a 0. So, now this system is consistent we do not have pivot in the last column now. So, let us identify the pivots because that is another important step this is the pivot here in the first column this is not pivot. So, uh, each row and each column will have at most one pivot that is also also true this is the fact here because if this is the pivot then uh, nothing else can be the pivot because 2 cannot be pivot it is uh, left to this something uh, non zero is sitting. So, this cannot be the pivot now because uh, left to this uh, so th this is a 0 element so cannot be uh, cannot be pivot because this is a uh, 0 element. So, this cannot be pivot. So, this is not pivot here we have pivot because now it satisfy all the properties uh, everything left to this 0 here 0 and here also 0. Now, coming to this one this is also pivot here 0 here 0 and then this last column also does not have a pivot because now this cannot be a pivot and this cannot be a pivot. So, what do we have finally, uh, we have a uh, we have one pivot here, one pivot here and one pivot here. So, 1, 2, 3 we have 3 pivots, we have 3 pivots and we have 5 unknowns. So, this is the case where we get infinitely many solutions and uh, coming now to this one uh, we will introduce these free variables and again just to recall from the previous lecture and again. Uh, this is more general. So, we will understand here the first column has a pivot. So, uh, this is not this we will not take as a free variable the second column does not have a pivot. So, this x 2 we have marked here as free variables and uh, this column has a pivot. So, this is corresponding to x 3 we are not uh, taking as free variable. So, this is uh, so called the dependent variables we can call. So, this x 3 is dependent this is not free we have the pivot there. So, wherever we have a pivot we uh, mark them as dependent variables and wherever we do not have a pivot we will mark them free variables that is a that is a simple uh, simple algorithm we will follow here though it is not necessary that we have to do in this way, but this is a very systematic approach. So, go to the column number 1 if it has a pivot element mark this as a dependent variable go to the next column 2 it does not have a uh, pivot element there is no pivot element in column 2 we will mark as, uh, as, as a free variable column number 3 has a pivot then this is marked as a dependent variable again column number 4 has a pivot. So, this we have marked as a dependent variable column number 5 uh, again we have marked as a free variable because it does not have a pivot. By doing this now we have so many things uh, uh, in, in hand because free variables means we can choose we can give the values whatever we like and whenever we have free variables in the system. Uh, that means, we have infinitely many solutions. So, this is the case of infinitely many solutions since we have the free variables free variables again means they are free you can choose whatever you like. So, in this case we have two in fact free variables. So, we have more possibilities to to actually choose the choose the uh, variables now here. So, 
this x 2 and x 5 these are the two uh, free variables. So, we will take like x 2 alpha 1 and x 5 as alpha 2 in that case now from this equation number 3 we can write down x 4. So, from here 2 times x 4 is equal to minus uh, this x 5 and x 5 we have taken x 2. So, this x 4 we can write down in terms of alpha 2. Similarly, the x 3 from this equation number 2 we can write down in terms of this uh, the, the dependent uh, this free variables and also the x 1 from equation number 1 we can write down in terms of these free variables alpha 1 and alpha 2. In the vector form we can place them. So, x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 the constant from each. So, from x 1 we have this 9 as constant from x 2 uh, was alpha 1 only. So, there is nothing uh, constant from this x 3 we have 4 as constant and from x 4 uh, there is nothing exactly and from x 5 also we do not have anything to take as a constant. And then this alpha 1 and then the rest from x 1 for example, we have 9 minus 2. So, minus 2 was with alpha 1. So, minus 2 here and with alpha 2 we have a uh, with, with alpha 2 here in x 1 we have minus 9.5 though this is uh, taken here in this uh, vector. So, we can write down now these x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 and x 5 in this particular form where we have first vector free from these free variables and then this is with alpha 1 the one free variable the vector again coming here and x 2 again this free vector you know, with this free variable again this vector is coming up. And uh, what we have also seen uh, that we have a very special structure now when we write down in this form that this is a particular solution, a particular solution of the given system A x is equal to b, whereas this part with this alphas, alpha 1 and alpha 2, these the, the, these vectors or the combination of, of these vectors they satisfy the homogeneous uh, the corresponding homogeneous equation that means A x is equal to uh, 0. So, here this x p this particular solution. So, if we substitute here in, in instead of x this x p this A x will give exactly b the given system and here this this part actually satisfy A x is equal to 0. And, and that is for as a total also we have uh, the solution. So, this x is a solution because, because a and, and this x has two parts a particular plus this x h and then we can use uh, this product rule here. So, a x p plus this a x h and this is 0 anyway and this a x p will give b. So, as a whole also this x will satisfy a x is equal to b, but if we go little more into the detail what we observe that actually this part is, is satisfying a x is equal to b and this part is satisfying a x is equal to 0. So, a x is equal to 0 and then uh, as a sum also they will satisfy naturally because of this reason here a x h is 0 and a x uh, this particular is b. So, we have at the end this b plus 0 which is b. So, but this is interesting now to note that we have uh, this um, structure and this is always possible to write down for whatever system. In fact, we have this nice result that the solution of a non homogeneous linear system non homogeneous we call this a x is equal to b when the b is not 0 we call non homogeneous when b is 0 we call it homogeneous system. So, the solution of non homogeneous linear system is always of the form x p plus x, x h where x p is any fixed solution of a x is equal to b and this x h uh, this uh, for homogeneous part uh, it runs through all the solutions corresponding to homogeneous system a x is equal to 0 because you can keep on changing the values of alpha 1 and alpha 2 and we can produce uh, the, the infinitely many solutions of this a x is equal to uh, 0 equation or a x is equal to b equation because the whole here x p plus this x h is also satisfying the a x is equal to b uh, system of equation. So, just a remark that these free variables are the responsible for infinitely many solutions. So, in conclusion whenever we have free variables in our system that means some columns do not have a, a pivot and in that case uh, there will be a case of this infinitely many solutions. 
and invertible matrix will have no free variable. The reason is clear because once the matrix is invertible, we get actually unique solution. And if we have a unique solution, definitely we will not have a free variables or other way around. If we observe that there is no free variable, that means this A is also invertible. So, this vector that generates a solution of Ax is equal to 0, what we have just seen that for Ax is equal to 0, the, all the solutions we can generate with the help of those two vectors. This was appearing with alpha 1 and this was appearing with alpha 2. We have just used here this transpose because they were given in this column form. So, these vectors they are so called the generators of, of the solution of this Ax is equal to 0, that is what we have observed. And these generators are, are the basis, are the basis of, so this term we will introduce a little later. So, some technical terms uh, I am just mentioning here, but uh, they will be discussed in the next lecture. So, these generators which we have just seen before, these are called the basis because these are the, the main component that is the generator of the solution. So, these are called basis of the solution space, again one more term has come. Uh, the solution space of this Ax is equal to 0, because this Ax is equal to 0 has infinitely many solutions in that case for instance. And uh, these vectors are called basis of the space where we have uh, so many solutions there and that is space is also called the null space, which again will be discussed uh, in the next lecture. Yeah, exactly here the null space is a vector space. So, again one more term here the vector space has come. So, this null space which is the solution space here uh, is a vector space and uh, there are some properties of, of, of a set here, the solution set which we are talking about which will be later called as a vector space. Like uh, for instance here we see that if we add two solutions, uh, the new solution will be also solution of this Ax is equal to 0 equation because A and if x1 satisfy this and A and the x2 also satisfy this and then the a and this x 1 plus x 2 will also satisfy uh, that equation, because a x 1 plus a x 2 both are the 0 0. So, that will also satisfy. So, this solution set here of a x is equal to 0 has some nice properties like you add any two solution that will be also a solution or you multiply by n number to this solution that will be also a solution. So, there are so many other properties which a vector space has. So, that we will discuss exactly in the next lecture. And the conclusion here, so for the system of equations this echelon form was very, very important and we have introduced this concept of the free variable and that lead to basically infinitely many solutions. And the solution of a non-homogeneous system of equation has this special structure that we get this x p which satisfy the, the given a x is equal to b and we have a part here x h which satisfy a x is equal to 0 and as a whole also this x means this satisfy a x is equal to b. So, these are the references used and thank you.